when you say I am solid, I'm stable, I'm secure, I'm strong, I'm more than a conqueror, the devil is going to come and check if it is true about you. When you say I'm complete physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, nothing broken, nothing missing, the devil will come and check whether you mean what you're saying. Hallelujah. And get your answer ready for the devil. Don't live in denial. Don't pretend that nothing is wrong. Just say exhausted, but still pursue it. Welcome to Maximize Live, the television broadcast from New Wine Church, London. Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Our mandate is to challenge you to be all you can be. So get ready to be encouraged, enriched, and empowered. You will never be the same again. Now here is your host, Pastor Michael Olaware. Thank you so much for joining us on the broadcast today. This is Maximize Life, where we encourage you to be all that you can be. I am Michael Olaware, your host and the senior pastor of New Wine Church, Ewilich, London. Dr. Tayo Adiemi, the founding pastor of New Wine Church, London, and my spiritual father, who has gone home to be with the Lord, encourages us on to this program to look beyond the beginning and play our part in completing what God has begun in our lives. So this message is titled, A New Beginning is Only a Beginning. I am sure it will encourage, enrich, and empower you. Stay tuned. Moses dies, Joshua takes over, he shows it to Joshua. He says, I don't want you to have any confusion in your mind as to what I have intended for you to inherit. Now go to Joshua chapter 13. And you will find what I consider to be one of the saddest, saddest testimonies in scripture. Joshua 13 verse 1. Now Joshua was old, advanced in years. And the Lord said to him, you are old, advanced in years. And there remains very much land yet to be possessed. May it not be said about you that you have come to the end of your days and there remains much land to be possessed. May your testimony be the testimony of Paul the Apostle. 2 Timothy 4, 7. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Another version says, I have finished my course. Paul was saying, listen guys, there is nothing more for me to do. No more territory to take. I took it all. I did it all. I came. I saw. I conquered. I commenced. I continued. I completed. <laughs> Hallelujah. A new beginning. Tell them again, a new beginning is only a beginning. Tell them, con commence, continue, complete. So what must you do with your own new beginnings? I want to share with you today four things you need to do with your own new beginnings. Number one, ask God to show you what is yours. Ask God to show you what is yours. Remember 1 Corinthians 2, 12, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we may know what has been freely given to us. It's important you know what God has given to you. And there are two reasons for this. Number one, you don't want to waste your time fighting for what God has not given you. And there are many people who are fighting for what is not theirs. Expending their energy. Putting their hopes on something that will never come to pass. Because it's not God's will for your life. Number two, you don't want to settle for less than what God has given you. Again, there are too many children of God who are living beneath their privileges. So you got the new job, but that's only the beginning. What if God wants you to eventually become a director in the company? I thought someone would say amen to that. Amen. Because why can't it be you? Joseph came into Egypt as a slave. He ended up being the prime minister. Don't be limited to your point of entry. Your point of entry is only that. It's only a point of entry. Everybody enters at ground level, but you can end up in the penthouse. So you started your business. That's only the beginning. What if God wants you to operate a chain of businesses? Tell your neighbor you need to know. Number two, ask yourself, do I want it? Do I want it? Because you see, it is one thing for God to want it for you. It's another thing entirely for you to want it for yourself. 
Part of the problem of the children of Israel is God wanted something for them that they did not want for themselves. One of the most powerful questions you can ever hear God ask you is, what do you want? Ask your neighbor for me, what do you want? When you look through the ministry of Jesus in the face of obvious need, this was one of the most common questions that Jesus asked. What do you want? Matthew 20, 32. What do you want me to do for you? Mark 10, 36. What do you want me to do for you? Mark 10, 51. What do you want me to do for you? Luke 18, 41. What do you want me to do for you? John 5, 6. Do you want to be made well? Jesus did not assume that because a man was blind, he wanted to see. He asked him, what do you want? God wants us to clarify. Say clarify. And he wants us to specify. Say specify. He wants us to clarify and specify what we want. What's your vision? What's your dream? What's your desire? The number one issue in faith is clarity and specificity. Say clarify. Say specify. You probably heard the story of the little boy who was walking down a stream one day and he saw a frog. He took the frog and put it in its pocket. And no sooner had he moved from the place, did the frog jump out of the pocket and land on his shoulder and lick his cheek and say, hey boy, I'm a miracle frog. If you kiss me, I will turn into a beautiful princess, love you forever, and we will live ever happily ever after. And the boy's eyes popped and he said, that is so cool. And then he put the frog back in his pocket and kept walking. Frog jumps out again, lands on his head this time. And says, hey boy, didn't you hear me? I'm a miracle frog. If you kiss me, I'll turn into a beautiful princess. I will love you forever. And we will live happily ever after. The boy said, that is so cool. Put the frog back in his pocket. Third time the frog jumped and licked him on the right cheek, licked him on the left cheek. And said, hey boy, can't you hear me? I told you I'm a miracle frog. If you kiss me. I'll turn into a beautiful princess, love you forever, and we will live happily ever after. The boy grabbed the frog and squeezed it and looked it in the eye and said, Listen, frog, I'm only an eight-year-old boy. I don't want a princess. I want a talking frog. <laughs> so the question is, what do you want? What do you want? Ask God to show what it is to you, what is yours. But number two, ask yourself, do I want it? Number three, start to possess and don't stop until God says so. What did I say? Start to possess and don't stop until God says so. The problem with too many believers is they arrive too quickly. They arrive too quickly. One small conquest and they are complacent. Don't stop pursuing until you recover all. That was God's instruction to David. Pursue, overtake, recover all. When you come to Judges chapter 6, you will read the story of a man by the name Gideon. You know the story already. Gideon started out in life just trying to survive in the middle of difficult circumstances. Maybe there are some of you in this room like that today. Just trying to survive in the middle of circumstances that are difficult. When we meet Gideon, Gideon is hiding from the enemy. And then God speaks to him in Judges chapter 6. Go there, verse 12. The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Now notice, at this point in Gideon's life, there is nothing mighty about him. And there is definitely nothing valiant about him. I mean, this guy is a spineless, jelly need, yellow-bellied coward. He's hiding. He's not a man. He's a wimp. He's a chicken. But God says, mighty man of valor. This guy is the ultimate example of cowardice. But here's the thing about God, people. God will never address you like you're a victim. I want you to check. You, you check for yourself. Go back and think about all of God's dealings with you. When did God ever feel sorry for you? Mm -mm. Because in God's eyes, you are not a victim. God will never address you on the basis of where you are. 
he will always address you as he sees you. Mighty man of valor. How does he see you? He sees you in the image of God. He sees you after the likeness of God. He sees you as strong, mighty, valiant, full of power, full of potential, full of creativity, full of initiative. He knows that you are weak now, but he sees you with a great future. Gideon begins to complain in verse 13. Not only does he believe that God has forsaken him, he actually believes that he's in that situation because of God. He believes God put them in that dire situation that they're in. And how, how many of us get like that sometimes? Now Gideon takes his understanding of God and reduces it to the size of his current experience. Tell your neighbor for me, don't reduce your God to the size of your experience. But I love God, you know. God just carries on as if Gideon never said anything at all. Because when you come to verse 14, God says, Go in this your might, for you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. You know why? Because really, in God's economy, Gideon didn't say anything. His lips were moving, but nothing registered in God's ears. Because listen, if your words are not based on faith, they do not register in God's ears. Hebrews eleven six: 6, without faith, it is impossible to please him. What is God doing as he's dealing with Gideon? He's trying to help Gideon to see beyond his current circumstances. Because you see, once you get locked in the web of your current circumstances, you can't see what God is doing. Anyway, God launches Gideon out with 300 men, takes an army of 32,000, wills them down to 300 who are strong and brave and valiant and full of faith. Now, God had said to him, I will give you the victory. God has said to him, I am with you. But I want you to notice that Gideon still had to fight in spite of the fact that God said, I am with you. The fact that God is with you doesn't mean you won't have to fight. The fact that God said, I will give you the victory doesn't mean it will come easy. It simply means that when all is said and done in the final analysis, you get the victory. But this is what I really want you to see. It's in Judges chapter 8. Judges chapter 8 and verse 4. When Gideon came to the Jordan, he and the 300 men who were with him crossed over. Look at the next phrase there. Exhausted, but still in pursuit. Somebody say exhausted, exhausted. but still pursuing. Say again, exhausted, but still pursuing. So this is the question this morning. Are you still in pursuit? Are you still in pursuit? The next time somebody asks you, how are you? And you know that you are not fine. How many of you know that plastic religious answer we always give? When they ask you, how are you? And you know that you are not fine. Just answer them, exhausted, but still pursuing. Exhausted, but still pursuing. I've got bruises all over me. I've been battered. There's death in my nails. My makeup is messed up. My hair is falling apart. But guess what? My shoulders are square, and I'm still pursuing. Say it again. Exhausted, but still pursuing. When the bills are high and the funds are low, and the enemy says to you, what you going to do now? Tell him, Exhausted, but still pursuing. When you walk out of the doctor's surgery and the diagnosis is really bad, and the prognosis is even worse, and somebody says, how did you fare at the doctor's surgery? Tell them, exhausted, but still pursuing. When it seems like your entire world is collapsing all around you, square your shoulders and say, I'm exhausted, but still pursuing. When the credit crunch threatens to squeeze the life out of you, shake it off and say exhausted, but still pursuing. When you get another phone call from the school about your wayward child, and you are coming to the end of your tether, and you walk into the head teacher's office and they say, Mrs. So-and-so, how are you? Tell them exhausted. But still pursuing when your marriage is in stormy waters and it seems like you won't make it. In fact, it seems like you don't want to make it. And the devil says, what are you going to do now? Tell the devil, exhausted, 
but still pursuing. When the devil tells you to give up and throw in the towel, when he says, roll over and play dead and let me bury you, look him in the face and say, devil, I'm exhausted, but still pursuing. When the business you built for the last 12 years is about to go belly up, and it seems like the creditors are going to shred it apart, look the devil in the face and say, I'm exhausted, but still pursuing. When the petrol prices are driving you crazy, drive into that petrol station, pick up that pump, and look at that pump and say, exhausted, but still pursuing. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. When they say they are going to repossess your home and you hold the county court judgment in your hand and the date is drawing near by the day, look at that letter and say, exhausted but still pursuing. When there's no food in the cupboard and there's no money in the bank, shake your feet and say, exhausted but still pursuing. When you receive the letter from your 200th job application and they say, we regret to inform you, look that letter in the face and say, exhausted, but still pursuing. Exhausted, 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 but still pursuing. I'm not giving up. I'm not throwing in the towel. I'm not caving in. I'm not quitting. I have begun this journey. I will continue and I will complete. I will complete. Don't allow the enemy to discourage you. It's only the beginning. It's only the beginning. And the devil is going to challenge you. He's going to try to check what stuff you're made of in this whole new beginning thing. It's all right to say it's my new beginnings when you come to church and when Pastor Tyre says, shout about it, shout about it. But the devil will come and check you out and find out if you really believe the things you say in church on Sunday. When you say, I am solid, I'm stable, I'm secure, I'm strong, I'm more than a conqueror. The devil is going to come and check if it is true about you. When you say, I'm complete physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, nothing broken, nothing missing. The devil will come and check whether you mean what you're saying. Hallelujah. And get your answer ready for the devil. Don't live in denial. Don't pretend that nothing is wrong. Just say exhausted, but still pursuing. Exhausted, but still pursuing. You see, it's okay to be tired. It's okay to be tired. Some of my guys ask me sometimes, how are you, pastor? And I say, tired. <laughs> tired is how I am. It's okay to be tired. The strongest of men get tired. Even Jesus was tired. He slept in the boat. It's okay to be tired, but it's not okay to quit. Somebody said, when you are fighting a gorilla, you know gorilla, King Kong? When you are fighting a gorilla, you don't quit when you are tired. You quit when the gorilla is tired. <laughs> Say exhausted, but still pursuing. When you are tired, don't stop running. When you're tired, don't stop pursuing. Just ask God to help you. And your help will come from God who made heaven and earth. That's why I like the song we heard this morning. That his strength is perfect when all of our strength is gone. Because when you say, God help me, you're saying, Lord, I haven't changed my mind. Lord, I still want this new beginning thing. I want to possess my promised land. But I need your help. And God will help you. Listen to me, people. Sometimes things will not go according to your plan. Things will not turn out the way you expected them to turn out. That's not a reason to quit. It's a reason for mid-course correction. You see, in flying, there's something called mid-course correction. If a plane takes off from Heathrow this afternoon and heads for Madrid, 20 minutes into that flight, that plane will not be pointing in the direction of Madrid because all kinds of forces will be working on the plane. The wind, the waves of the sea, the gravitational pull of the earth and of the moon will cause that plane to veer off course. But notice the pilot does not turn the plane back, plane back and go to Heathrow. He simply makes the adjustment and sets himself back on course. It's called mid-course correction. That's why your car has a steering wheel. So that when the road bends, you can bend your car with the road. Therefore, a bend in the road does not have to become an end in the road. Because you know how to correct yourself in the middle of the journey. So don't be faced. Don't be frustrated. Don't be harassed when things don't go according to your plan. Just adjust. The question today though is, are you still pursuing? 
Are you still pursuing it or have you given up on your dreams? Are you still pursuing or have you given up on your vision? Are you still pursuing or have you settled for a life that is just okay? A vague, general, boring, predictable, limp, lame, insipid, dull, mundane, routinous life. Are you still pursuing? Because you see, you were designed to pursue. Look at children. They're always pursuing. They want to climb the couch and see what is behind it. They want to enter the cupboard and pull out the pot and get into the pot. They're always opening things and pulling things because they're born to pursue. Tell your neighbor for me you were born to pursue. So don't stop pursuing until you claim the full extent of your promised land. And in fact, this is what I've discovered. You have no right to ask God to enlarge your territory if you have not fully claimed the Torrey territory he already gave you. If I gave you one acre of land and you farm only one quarter of the acre, you have no right to ask me for a second acre. You should come to me and say, listen, I have used the full acre. I need more land. And that's what God is waiting for. Are you hearing me today? Number four, select those who will make the journey with you. Some relationships that are okay at one level of life are not fit for purpose at another level of life. And some of the mistakes that we make is that we try to take people to the next level who are not supposed to go to the next level with us. Stop trying to take people with you who don't want to go with you. Stop trying to take people with you who are not supposed to go with you. Abraham could not step into his own new beginning because he took Lot with him. And he got stuck until he disconnected from Lot. That's when God spoke to him and said, look now to the north, the south, the east, and the west. As far as you can see, I will give you all the land. Part of the undoing of the children of Israel is that when they left Egypt, they allowed a group to live with them that the Bible simply identifies as a mixed multitude. And it was that mixed multitude that caused them to sin against God in murmuring and complaining. Ask your neighbor for me, is there a mixed multitude in your camp? You know, if you put one crab inside a bucket, immediately it will climb out. But if you put two crabs inside a bucket, both of them will die inside that bucket. Because when one tries to climb, the other will pull him out, pull him back. When the other tries to climb, the first one will pull him back. You need to walk up to some people this week and tell them, you are my crab. <laughs> no, no, when you say it, be, be more tactful than that. <laughs> Get really spiritual and say, I say unto thee, thou art the crab that pulls me back. You know, a group of scientists took five monkeys and put them in a room. There was a pole in the middle of the room that the monkeys could climb. And they hung a juicy, beautiful, luscious bunch of bananas at the top of the pole. And right on the ceiling, there was a shower mechanism. As the monkey would climb up the pole and get to a certain point, the shower will trigger and will douse the monkey in freezing cold water, wet all the other four monkeys on the ground. Another monkey will try, they get a shower. Every time they will reach for the banana, they were rewarded with a shower. After a while, if a monkey tried to climb the pole, the remaining four will pull him down and beat him. <laughs> then the scientists took out one of the five original monkeys and brought another monkey and then turned off the shower trigger. So there was no more shower. Of course, the four didn't try to climb, but the new monkey tried to reach for the banana. And the other four pulled him down and beat him. And then they took one of the original four, replaced it with another one. And they did like that until there were five new monkeys who never experienced the shower. Do you know they never ate the bananas? Because every time one of them reached up, the other four pulled him down and beat him. And I am wondering this morning, which monkey is pulling you down <laughs> and beating you? Select your company. Not everybody can go with you. Surround yourself with people who will encourage you, challenge you even to maximize your potential. Friends, God has set a whole new beginning before us. It's a whole new land to explore. It's vast. It's good. It's large. It's flowing with milk and honey. And I want to challenge you today. Make sure you claim everything that God has for you. Tell your neighbor for me for the last time. A new beginning is only a beginning.
Let us pray. Father, we thank you today. We are so grateful. Our hearts overflow with a good thing. We are full of joy, full of expectation, full of anticipation because of the new things that you are doing in our lives. And we thank you because you are not just a beginner, you are also a finisher. You will finish the work you've begun in us. You will continue it until you bring it to a flourishing conclusion. And so we claim the full extent of our promised land. We claim the full extent of our new beginnings. We receive the courage to pursue until we take it all. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. I trust that this message has enriched you and challenged you immensely to be all that you can be. If you have any questions, comments, or prayer requests about what you have heard today, do not hesitate to contact me using the details on your screen, and I'll be glad to serve you as best as I can. Also, if you live in or visiting the London excess of Kent area of the United Kingdom, we encourage you to come and worship with us at New Wine Church. All our service details are on your screen right now. Well, till the next time on Maximize Life, God bless you.